So thank you very much for being uh, so many today. Uh, that is the proof, as Sergio was just mentioned, that there is a clear need uh, to be fulfilled by us. Mm, we have now the presentation. I would like to, to underline one thing. Uh, I think that the duty of the trade unions is to be aware that we can try to, to get uh, members with different actions. But when it comes to deal with health, the concern is not to get support, it's not to get business, is to provide you with the best possible assistance. And now everyone dealing with insurance is fully aware of, uh, we need to have lots of colleagues subscribing on insurance if we want this insurance to be successful. And it's also evident that not all the insurance are the same. I wouldn't say that there is one who is the best. It depends on your profile and your needs, on your conditions, your age, that is why we are trying to present all possible options. And in this respect, it is not even a conflict with the administration. We work together, and as Serge has just published, is under the aegis of the GHR. So we work together in order to provide the best possible assistance. <clears throat> so I leave now the floor to Serge, that I want to thank you again for his efforts. Serge is a former colleague, former trade unions, Unionist, he has been the, secret, the first Secretary General of the Alliance of the Trade Unions, is now chairing uh, an association of retired colleagues who is called SEPS, that we are supporting fully. So he's really the best possible person to, 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 to do that. Uh, yeah, for those who ask me to, 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 to repeat just in French, I mean, j'étais simplement en train de dire que uh, lorsqu'il est question de, de protéger la, la santé de nos collègues, il ne peut pas être question pour un syndicat de faire du business ou de chercher des adhérents. Nous devons vous fournir l'assistance la, la, la meilleure qu'il est possible de vous offrir. Et en matière d'assurance, il est clair que la masse critique des collègues qui souscrivent un contrat a un impact évident sur les conditions que l'assureur peut offrir. Tout comme il est évident qu'il n'y a pas une, une assurance qui est meilleure que les autres, ça dépend de votre profil, de votre âge, de toute une série de conditions que Serge va vous expliquer maintenant pour que vous puissiez faire un choix en pleine connaissance des causes. Serge, floor is yours. Merci. Bonjour à tous. Mon ah. système n'avance pas. Ça commence bien. OK. Donc, nous allons parler de l'assurance complémentaire à... No, sorry, I saw... We have to speak English. So we are speaking about insurances to supplement JSIS, perfectly organized to supplement JSIS, so very complementary to JSIS. And JSIS is, of course, our first means to support problems concerning medical care costs. An important way of covering problems of health is assistance schemes, and the PMO insists very much when you go abroad, don't forget. Supplementary or complementary insurance, this is the way, this is what we will tell today. And the next point is accident insurance. We will say some words because it is very important, mainly for people going on a retirement to say some words about it. So what is the motivation for insurance policies to supplement this? The first motivation is to get a final reimbursement, which is of 100% of the cost or of the expenses you made for your health. Generally, Jesus is reimbursing 15% or 20%, but in some cases it goes down to 36 for many of us and even 50% or less if you go in countries with very high medical care costs. There could be also a negative financial evolution of Jesus. We will discuss it in a few moments. And something you will understand later is that it is representing a sort of comfort. You don't have to make any bookkeeping to get the best possible reimbursement. If you look to the JSIS evolution, you understand that what is expenses and what is revenue or income are very near. 
Of course, in the last two years, because of the COVID, a lot of colleagues didn't go to the hospital, were waiting for a better situation to be or to have some, uh, I would say, support. We expect in 2022-2023 that the two curves will be very near one to the other. But as you know, young colleagues now have lower salaries than we had in the past, and the increase of the medical care cost is effective. Moreover, member states do not accept to increase the contribution to uh, JZs. So we have to be careful, and uh, there could be some problem, there could be some, uh, I would say, difficulty to cover the expenses as it is happening for the moment. But now we have to think of insurances and how do we decide to choose? Well, we tried to make a list of questions and these questions were elaborated due to the experience we have mainly with the retired staff. We saw that retired staff had difficulties with the understanding of the insurances and had also difficulties to uh, really decide on what to do, where to go. What are the questions? Financial risk, which type of insurance, when to take out an insurance, level of financial cover, level of premium, cover of health care after an accident, yes or not. Other parameters are also to be considered. We will not detail all these points, but the first point is really important, the financial risk, because it is because of this financial risk that a lot of us are deciding to take out an insurance. Now, we suppose we have a reimbursement at 85% or 100% if, by case, we are in a serious illness uh, condition and it is recognized. But serious illness is not happening for everything. If you have total prosthesis of your knees or hip, this is not a severe illness, but it is a severe cost when you go to hospital. Countries with high medical care costs can result in a rather low reimbursement by uh, JASIS, even under the 50%. Ceiling are existing, and ceilings should be increased, but are not increased. They were decided in 2007. They are not increased, and increasing the ceilings too much could lead to some, uh, would say, financial difficulties of the system. There are limitations. There are exclusions. There is effectiveness. All these points have to be considered and could lead you to think of a complementary insurance to Jesus. <coughs> Just to give you an illustration, in the reports of Jesus, it's not my invention, it is in the report, in 2015, the overall statistical reimbursement was around 77% and not 85%. In 2017, it was 81%. What is very important to understand is that if you consider the expenses which are characterized by a ceiling by Jesus, in 2020, this, uh, I would say, locked reimbursement were reaching an average of 64%. So it means that the people having expenses which were characterized by a ceiling had only had to reimburse by themselves statistically 36%. It can be, I would say, an incentive to think of an insurance. Of course, we have to think that our staff regulations are, I would say, very good for us. They limit the financial risk. The financial risk is limited by an article which is called 72.3. This article, in summary, is giving you the insurance that the risk you have is limited during a year to half a monthly salary or half a monthly pension. So the financial risk you have to keep in mind is half your monthly salary. 
Of course, if you want to take benefit of this kind of limitation, which is part of our staff regulations, you have to ask for it because it is not automatic. So it is an administration burner, a burden, and it will take you time to assemble all these possible expenses which were not reimbursed during a period of 12 months. And you have to select the mostly beneficial 12 months period. Now, warning, exclusion decided by GRC are also exclusions for the insurances in general. So what are the solutions if you want to get the best possible reimbursement of uh, expenses, medical expenses? Well, the first, of course, is to have money aside. If you get uh, sufficient economies, you are your own insurance company. It means that, in fact, you will never pay taxes about it. You will not give benefits, benefits to the insurance companies. It's the best way. But there is another solution, is to take out a health insurance to supplement JZs. And what is important to know is that if you want to cover the, uh, I would say, major risks or the high risk, it means what is hospitalization, it could cost you about 150 euros per year, which is not a lot, which can, in fact, be supported by every one of us. But of course, if you look for an insurance that I will qualify as a Rolls Royce, then you have perhaps to spend more than 2,000 euros a year. So what are the top ups? The top ups can be at 100% if you select a policy which says 100% reimbursement. But other policies are reimbursing 15% of the bill or 20% of the bill according to the rules of the GRC. But of course, you have to be aware of limitations. If you don't get these 85 or 80% of, of the JZs, then in that case, you have a loss, but which is rather limited. What are the primes? I already told you that the primes for the high risks are limited, depending, of course, on the age. And if you want to have a very comprehensive insurance, what I call Rolls Royce, then you can go up to 2,000 euros a year. What kind of an insurance? And this is another question, another question which is perhaps more important than one could believe. Collective or individual? If it is collective, it means that there is a group which defines something like a contract with a framework contract with the insurance company. And this group is able also to verify that primes are not modified during the period of this framework contract and can also defend yourself if you have some trouble with the insurance company. So very often it is the case in any case for affiliates who is responsible for the insurances at affiliates myself, can play the role of moderator, can also try to help problems you could have with the insurance company. Medical questionnaire. Some insurances are with the others without medical questionnaire. We already said high risk or a comprehensive insurance. Financial level of the premiums, of course, this is an important part. And we have to consider the accidents, mainly for the pensioners, because the pensioners are losing the benefit of Article 73 of the staff regulations, article which says that for active staff, accidents are reimbursed at 100% and that also invalidity is covered. When to take out an insurance? Very briefly, looking at this diagram of JZs in the report 2015, you see in red that for the category 31-35, it is the age, there is a reimbursement, statistical reimbursement of 2,000 euros. If it is 2,000, probably what was not reimbursed is about 400 euros. 400 is much less than the, uh, I would say, high risk insurance you could take. It is of about 75 euros at that age 
to cover a certain part of this reimbursement. So if you look to the expenses that you could have and the reimbursement, which are a, traduction, a translation of these uh, expenses, you consider very easily that it is important to take the insurance as soon as possible. Don't wait for retirement. Further considerations for life, continuation if you leave the institutions, geographical spread, is it limited to the European Union, to the economic area or whatever, stability of the premium, some insurance policies are suspended or change their condition when you reach the age of 65, 75, 80. This is an important point. You have to make sure you have this information. <coughs> After this introduction, let us go to the insurance policies, trying to give you I would say the highlights of these insurances so that afterwards you could be in a position to decide or to select and understand what has or what has to be really considered. The first group of insurances or policies is the one with medical questionnaire and with moratorium. It means rather complete insurances, but which try to introduce some mod mo moderation of their possible reimbursement, considering that if you have problems, even if you take an insurance, they have to be careful. In fact, it is always the same question. You have to take an insurance before you need it. The first example is hospice safe. Sickness and accident, it is the standard hospice safe insurance which is proposed by affiliates. But it is now also proposed by uh, Union Syndicale, proposed by SFE at the European Parliament, proposed by you for you. A lot of the colleagues are now considering this is the best example to consider. In fact, we have already 24,000 colleagues which are insured with hospice safe. It's a collective insurance. So you remember what I said. Affiliatis is there to manage the framework contract, also to make the call for tenders, to make sure that we remain, I would say, with uh, good uh, proposals. Also, affiliates is there to take care of your possible questions, uh, claims, if you have problems with the insurance company, which can occur if you have 24,000 con 24, contracts to manage, mistakes can always happen. Unfortunately, this insurance has to be subscribed before retirement. A lot of colleagues Colleagues are, in fact, understanding that an insurance is important, it's necessary, but after retirement, please take it before. No medical questionnaire, except if you are near to retirement. There is a moratorium of two years for illnesses which are known at the moment of affiliation. But after two years, all illnesses, I would say, generating medical care costs are effectively uh, considered. But during the two first year, what is existing when the affiliation is made will not give you any rights for reimbursement during these two years. It's a lifelong insurance, so you keep it when you go on retirement up to the last day of your life. It covers both illness and accident, Obviously, for the active staff, it is not necessary to cover the accident. Therefore, we will see another option afterwards. It is covering hospitalization. So what I call the high risk or the major risks. Hospitalization, but you have the right to take a single room, even at Chirac in Brussels. Operations, expenses occurred, examinations, medical visits, all what is linked to that hospitalization, either to motiv motivate the hospitalization or for revalidation afterwards, is 
considered for reimbursement. Reimbursement is at 100%, but there is a limit for revalidations. Could not explain why, but there are reasons the revalidation is reimbursed at the level of 20%, which is generally quite sufficient to reach the 100% of final reimbursement. All medical expenses during pregnancy. This was introduced in 2015 and gave rise to a very large increase of the category of uh, members of this insurance uh, with of the age category 30 to 40. This was very important for this insurance, which is always in benefit because young people are not ill very often, but they continue to uh, also pay for the insurance. Possibility to keep the insurance when you leave Jesus. It means when you leave any contract with EC. So the important thing is that you are a member, you get the insurance, you keep it, even if you are not insured by Jesus anymore, but <coughs> by another company. <coughs> of course, this other primary insurance is perhaps of no interest for a complementary insurance. If you are in UK, you have NHS, NHS is covering all the expenses. So why one uh, insurance to complement NHS would be interesting? I don't know. So probably it is not for everyone that it is interesting to keep the insurance when you go somewhere else, but it is a possibility. It's a worldwide coverage, limitations outside European economic area. The limitation is that you will not get a complementary reimbursement of more than 25,000 euro per year. Annual premium, as you can see, this annual premium is not very high when you are young, of course. It is not high at all. And after 61, up to the end of your life, it is for the moment 248. Note that there is an increase of this premium as a function of the Eurostat index. And for next year, so starting in January, the increase will be of 2.44%. This is the Eurostat index. So you have an idea of what is this kind of insurance to support the expenses you have and considering some limitations of, of uh, JZs, also ceilings, also you know, some exclusions. Uh, this is very important because it covers this difference between the bill and what Jesus is proposing you. But we will go in detail a little later. I told you for active staff, accidents are covered by the staff regulations, 200%. So here we have the option of hospice sickness, exactly the same rule, but not considering accidents. And of course, the annual premium is somewhat lower. Now you can also consider an insurance which is more comprehensive, which is what I call the Rolls Royce. This insurance is covering not only all what is hospitalization, but also the uh, outpatient care medical visits, medicines, all examinations, dental care, uh, earrings, also optical, all this is considered in the insurance, but for many things, there are some ceilings, ceilings by the insurance itself. And the reimbursement for this outpatient care is not of 100%, it is 80% of the difference between the bill and what is reimbursed by Jesus. And if Jesus is reimbursing 85%, then the final reimbursement is reaching the level of 97%. So you lose 3% on this. But please remember there are ceilings. And the most, most important limit of the insurance is for dental care. 
dental care is limited to the first year, uh, during the first year to 800 euros per year. After five years, then this ceiling is going up to 3,200 euros per year. But it is a ceiling and dental care can be very expensive. So these are problems we have with all the insurances that dental care is never reimbursed sufficiently. Worldwide coverage, I already said, and the premium, as you can see, is now reaching more or less 2,000 euros per year when you are at the end of your career. When you are young, it is perhaps acceptable, but it remains a rather high premium as a complementary <coughs> insurance to Jesus. Now you have to consider that some problems arise because of changes. When I took the insurance myself in 1968, when I was at ISFRA, it was the Van Breda insurance. Everybody said Van Breda. It became Cigna, because Van Breda International was bought by Cigna in 2013. And in 2019, a call for tenders was made and the request uh, came also from the administration. We have to respect some rules of the commission. And unfortunately, <laughs> administratively, the winner of the call for tender was not Cigna. It was Allianz Worldwide Care. So we had to change our partners. We had to change our, I would call it administration, which led to some problems and a lot of colleagues didn't follow the change or forgot or were not happy with it. So we still try to, I would say, reorganize the insurance sort of a lot of colleagues who didn't know they were not by Cigna, but didn't make the steps to accept the proposal of Allianz. This can be settled in any case up to the end of this year, but probably also next year. Now, Allianz got Hospicef to manage. Cigna lost Hospicef and Cigna decided to keep the same insurance. It means to keep exactly the same as Hospicef, but was obliged to change the name and it became Eurprive Santé. This insurance is exactly the same as Hospicef, but they kept the medical questionnaire. Allianz is not asking for the medical questionnaire if you are not near to retirement. And this is the only difference. Of course, there is also a difference in the premiums, mainly if you are uh, retired. Signal lost the uh, call for tender, lost the management of the insurance, mainly because they didn't accept to wipe, to, to drop the medical questionnaire. It was a request of the administration to try to avoid medical questionnaires, because if by case one day it should be, I would say, recommended by the administration that a complementary insurance to Jesus would be considered, then a medical questionnaire would be considered as, a, you know, a difference between uh, who is in good health and who has, I would say, some problems. So it would be uh, a discrimination and this discrimination cannot be accepted by our administration. An example of administration who is really insisting that you consider a complementary insurance is NATO. The NATO colleagues are oriented by the administration to a complementary insurance. Now, Eurprive Santé was in fact a copy of uh, Hospicef and was maintained by Cigna. With how many colleagues? I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 perhaps, but not 24,000 because the 24,000 are with Allianz. And we discovered not a long time ago that this proposal was not present anymore on the website of Cigna. So we consider that you cannot subscribe to that insurance anymore. 
but it is existing and some colleagues are still insured. And the same <coughs> with the plus version. Plus, as you remember, means more or less Rolls Royce. So it's not present anymore on the site. Now, as I told you at NATO, there was, and there is still, the proposal of the administration to, I would say, subscribe to uh, an insurance, to uh, a complementary insurance. And this complementary insurance was proposed by Alliance Care to the NATO colleagues. Now, as the insurance was there, it was also proposed by Alliance to the Commission people, by or through or with the support of Union Syndicale. Now, this is available. This was subscribed by several of our colleagues. It is very near to HospiSafe. There are some differences. HospiSafe is, I would say, somewhat powerful. But the decision of uh, Alliance Care, which was notified to us, in fact, two weeks ago, is that they will make the necessary steps to transfer who is insured by Eurosante to HospiSafe. Because, in fact, they are now having two policies which are proposed to the people of the European institutions. One is Eurosante and the other one is HospiSafe. So the wish is to move everybody to HospiSafe. And of course, they have also the plus option that they call Optimum, which is very near to HospiSafe Plus. And again, this should be transferred to HospiSafe. Now we arrive to another category of colleagues, the colleagues who are in pension. Pensioners are not very often are not thinking of or were not thinking of insurances before their retirement. So when they arrive at retirement, when they are retired, they consider that perhaps an insurance could be or should be uh, important. And there is a proposal made by Ayace and Cigna, which is very near again to HospiSafe, which is more or less a copy of HospiSafe, but specifically considered for pensioners. In fact, you have to be a pensioner, you have to be a member of IHA to subscribe to this insurance. But there is an age limit, 67. So you have to make your decision before 67. There is a medical questionnaire. And of course, it's understandable due to the age. It's a lifelong insurance, very similar to HospiSafe, as I told you already. 100% reimbursement, same rules as HospiSafe. But HospiSafe was indicating that there is a limit in the reimbursement in non-economic, European economic area, limit of reimbursement of 2000. 500 or 25,000 euros. Here, there is another rule, another limitation, which says that you will never get more than what is reimbursed by Jesus. This appears stupid because Jesus is reimbursing 85 or 80 percent with some ceilings, but generally reimbursing much more than 50 percent. So, when does this apply? Well, it applies when you are in countries with very high medical care costs. Let us take United States, where what you get from Jesus could be as low as 30%. In that case, HospiSafe would reimburse 70%. In the case of this hospitalization by Ayace, the reimbursement would be 30% not more than what is given by Jesus. But this is a limitation, of course, in particular cases. You see what are the uh, fees, the annual premium. It's not very different than what is proposed by HospiSafe. You have, of course, to be a member of Affiliatis if you take HospiSafe. But Affiliatis asks you five euros once for ever, ever, ever to be a member. Here, if you have to be a member of IACHE, you have to pay the prime, the fees, the four, or I would say every year. 
Ayace has also introduced an option which is sickness only. Why? Not because you are reimbursed at 100% for accidents, because you are a pensioner. And a pensioner is losing the benefit of this 100% reimbursement. Accidents for pensioners are reimbursed at the level of 85% or a little less, just the same as if it were an illness. Now, why sickness only? Because, as you will see later, Ayash is proposing an accident insurance to replace Article 73 that we lose when we go on retirement. So this insurance is reimbursing more or less in the same way as OSPICEF, so we will not go in detail. There are other insurances. There is one insurance, DKV EU Plus, which was in fact uh, very well known and a lot of colleagues subscribed to this insurance 10 years ago. Now, unfortunately, because this was taken over by La Lux because of uh, fiscal uh, questions, this insurance is not anymore available for people outside of Luxembourg. It is only for Luxembourg colleagues. It is an insurance which is based on the non-reimbursement of JSIS. So you get 20% or you get 15% along the rules of JSIS. And of course, if JSIS is not giving you the 80%, then of course you will lose something more. This insurance was also very good because you had the right to discuss and modify the conditions. For example, it was possible to give more importance to dental care. Now, this is only for colleagues in Luxembourg, and of course also still working for those who have this insurance here in Brussels or anywhere else. EU Health, again an insurance which is very much uh, very well known in Luxembourg, and again an insurance which is working on this simple limit, 20% of the cost. They are reimbursing 20%. If, of course, Jesus is giving you only 80%. If you get 85, they are giving 15%. So no computation, no calculation, no administration, very simple. Of course, this insurance is, again, something like a Rolls Royce. It works, you can subscribe up to the age of 65, but it is, of course, a lifelong insurance. The Annual premium are, uh, of course, rather high. It's a Rolls Royce type insurance. There is an insurance which is very particular that we have to consider. This insurance is called Europat Insurance, and the company is Expat and Co. It was proposed very often by FFP in the past, and I knew it very well in the past. This insurance is individual. There is no medical questionnaire. There is some waiting period, but not, I would say, very important. But there is a moratorium. And this moratorium is not very well understood by the people who undersign this insurance. We will come back to that. Subscription up to the age of 70. It means when you are 69, it's okay. 70, it's not okay anymore. Now, looking to this insurance and the limit of 70 and the other insurance for the pensioners, the limit of 67, it means that pensioners who are looking for a supplementary insurance have to make up their mind to decide before the age of 70. Afterward, there is no possibility anymore there was an insurance which was very nice. It was proposed by Santalia. RD was, in fact, supporting this insurance very much. But unfortunately, it is not available anymore for subscription. It is only working for those who are already uh, members or affiliates to this insurance. So Europath insurance appears to be very good if you look to the website, you will consider that this is very didactic, very complete, and that, of course, the ceilings are very high. 
dental care is now going up to 5,500 per year, much better than hospice safe. Reimbursements are always 100%. And if Jesus is not intervening, you get 20%. Territorial limitations? Well, we don't know exactly. You have, in fact, to discuss with the insurance company. Also, if you want to have a quotation, because here they say it works up to the age of 60 for subscription. But if you want to subscribe when you are 69, it is acceptable, but you have to ask for a quotation. And I can tell you that when you reach the age of 70, it is going higher than 2,000 euros per year. So it is all choice, very well presented, covering everything. So there must be a problem somewhere, because it is better than the others appearing such in such way. So what are the problems? And this is an example of how you have to read carefully the conditions when you subscribe for an insurance. What is said on the website indicates already the orientation of the insurance. You should be sound of mind and able-bodied, so you should be in good health. So you have to take an insurance when you don't need it. This is the message. Then the second message, when you sign the uh, subscription, is that I declare to be healthy and I do not intend to have surgery, medical or dental treatment, or be hospitalized in the near future. What is the meaning of near future? This is a real question. I went up to the CEO, to the top manager of the insurance, to have the discussion. And at the end, he told me, well, it's something like two to three years, depending on the illness, depending on the problems that you could imagine were existing at the moment of uh, subscription. Let us consider arthrosis. You know that arthrosis is something which is evolving rather slowly and after some years leading you to prosthesis. Well, in fact, this insurance will not reimburse prosthesis, knees or hips, after two years. You have to be insured since several years to be reimbursed. So this is a limitation which is important. Then there is another problem. And several colleagues, in fact, gave us the written documents concerning this problem. The insurer may terminate the insurance. In fact, some of our colleagues were kicked out with the simple reason the statistics of your request for reimbursement is too high. So we have to consider that this insurance is perhaps very good for rather young colleagues. It's very good and very utilized for those uh, going abroad for studies. Or, but in fact, for pensioners, it would be a little bit dangerous. You could be kicked out if you have too many, uh, I would say, health problems. I come to the concept of overbilling. The overbilling, of course, can be systematic, as it was in Luxembourg, an agreement between the Commission and, uh, I would say, the medical system in the Luxembourg, where an overbilling of 15% was accepted. I'm speaking here of overbilling in general. When you go to the hospital and if the system knows that you are a European uh, member of the staff, then they have the tendency to increase. If you go to some hospitals, they will increase uh, the honoraries of the medical doctors of 20, 200% or 300%. Well, this kind of overbilling has to be considered when the insurance, the complementary insurance, has to cover your expenses. In principle, the complementary insurance is covering the overbilling. But there could be a problem if the PMO declares that there is excessivity or exclusion, then there is a question. Because the insurance has now the possibility to say, but this is excluded. So we don't have to 
reimburse you because the reimbursement is based on the principle. We give a complementary reimbursement to what is reimbursed by Jesus. If Jesus is not reimbursing anything, you don't have any complement. We got big problems, not with exclusion, because we cannot do anything. If it is excluded, it is excluded for the insurances. But for excessivity, some medical care costs are considered excessive by, I would say, the PMO. And the PMO decided that, for example, some expenses of maternity are excessive. Instead of installing a ceiling, because to install a ceiling, you have to change the whole changing the whole means to change the, the, the jeep, so the general provision. And uh, it is easier to say there is excessivity. We apply an article which is called Article 20 of the rules. So for the insurance company, the first uh, I would say, function is excessive, we don't reimburse. No, we had big discussions. And for the moment, mainly with HotSpeedSafe, it was agreed that excessivity decided by the PMO means new ceiling, and there is reimbursement. But it could be that for a lot of colleagues, this kind of, I would say, uncertainty would apply. And it will be the role of, I would say, affiliates or IAC to decide, to discuss with the company to obtain what was obtained with HospiSafe. Excessivity is considered as a ceiling, even if the reimbursement slip of the PMO is not showing any code related to, I would say, uh, hospitalization, for example, or even if there is in the column rejection or reject not acceptable for Article 72.3, something which could lead to the understanding of the insurance company that this should not be reimbursed. So this overbilling in some hospitals by some doctors could lead to discussions, but the principle is that the complementary insurance, mainly the insurance considering the high risks to hospitalization and what is linked to hospitalization, is reimbursing at 100%. So if hospitalization, things should be okay. For outpatient care, if you have the procedure, which is the one of uh, HospiSafe, then the 80% reimbursement of the difference is remaining and would in any case result in a very limited supplementary loss. But if in general you have an insurance which says 15 or 20% of the bill, then because of this excessivity, there could be a supplementary loss because 20% is not 30%. Now, some words about accident insurance. I already told you that we, when you go on uh, retirement, you lose this Article 73, which is giving a full reimbursement of what medical care costs are as a result of accident. So when you retire, you are reimbursed at 85%. When you are active, you are reimbursed at 100%. The supplementary health insurances are covering along the general conditions, as if it were an illness, if you are not reimbursed at 100%. And of course, if you are active, it is better to take the HospiSafe option or no, it's the HospiSafe option called illness only. Now, if you take an now if you don't take any insurance for accident, you are reimbursed by Jesus, but you don't have an invalidity capital or capital upon death, mainly for the retired staff. So it could be say, a need to consider an accident insurance to replace Article 73 
when you go on retirement. And this accident insurance is proposed by Cigna and IHC. It is very efficient, but of course, it is considering an annual prime. The advantage of this annual prime is that it is taken out of your salary or pension directly, and it appears on the salary slip or the pension slip. Important, because afterwards, if you have to pay taxes, you can say, no, it's money coming from the commission. So this accident insurance is important for pensioners. I will not spend too much time on it, but you have to know it is existing. Now, death and disability is another insurance considering accident, but also illness. So it is the only insurance that could complement Jesus to give you a capital money, some lump sum that you decide yourself in case of invalidity and in case of death. It can be of importance when uh, you are young and you want to make sure that immediately a lump sum of money would be available to your family in case of death or, I would say, important accident or illness. Now you have to consider also that it changes very much when you reach the age of 65. Invalidity is not valid anymore and the capital is divided by two. So this is an insurance for rather young colleagues traveling a lot, willing to have a supplementary insurance for their family in case of problem. Assistance, and it is the last category. I told you already the PMO is stressing the need of an assistance insurance. This need, in fact, is uh, very, very well understood when you look to some examples of colleagues going abroad and then having to stay in countries with very high medical care costs, like United States, for a certain time, and then organizing themselves their repatriation. Some colleagues could come back, and it's, these are real cases, uh, they're obliged to sell their house to pay the bills. So it is important to have a correct assistance insurance. And there are two proposals which were made by Affiliatis with Cigna showing the levels of what has to be paid for a whole year, but covering you correctly, mainly for what is medical care and also what is repatriation. To make sure that you are correctly covered, the experience shows that you have to ask for an insurance saying that the maximum limit is 1 million and not less. Of course, a lot of insurance are available through credit cards or bank cards, but generally it is not sufficient. Another proposal is made by Cigna IHC. This proposal is more expensive, but it's also more complete. But what is considered important is health, assistance to people, as medical assistance. This is what is very important. And this insurance is also understanding that the level has to be high for what concerns the maximum reimbursement possible for medical expenses, 1 million, and the excellent option is even going to 3 million. As I told you, several credit cards are offering insurances, but it's not always sufficient. Europat insurance that we saw uh, previously is offering an assistance insuring. Several credits are cards offer, but unfortunately, the levels of reimbursement of medical care costs are not sufficient. Several national travel assistance insurance are offered by, uh, I would, for example, your car insurance. They are very good, for example, in Belgium, Luxembourg. These are some of the best. Now, thank you for your attention about these insurances. I should like to introduce some more information that you could be interested to know if you have questions, if you have problems. First of all, there is a group of volunteers now called the insurance group trying to manage correctly 
the documents which have to be proposed, files, PowerPoints, to update the documents, which is a problem. You know that the documents you find on the websites, for example, myatracom, are always obsolete options because we have four or five options per year. Unfortunately, the, uh, the uh, times are changing, but also some insurances are disappearing. So we have very often uh, an update, and this update document is a new edition. The last edition is from October. We organize presentation, organize training, organize appointments, so we have a permanent possibility to receive uh, colleagues to discuss about insurance. <coughs> it is at the office of SEPS, which is near to the office of Affiliatis, and there you can and have a discussion. Now, <coughs> the reference is our working document available on request. And I think that RD will put it on the website. The questions have to be addressed where you wish to these two organizations, SEPS and Affiliatis, or directly to myself or to my colleagues. We are now two of us trying to make the presentations and answer the questions about the insurances. Allianz also introduce brokers and there is a broker called Van Breda behind the Berlaymont. There is a broker very near to the Rondpoint Schumann, we link, very active for the moment. And in Luxembourg, there is OCA also recommended by Allianz. This is what I wanted to tell you. I hope I was not too long. Thank you very, very much, Serge. I mean, the highest number of participants showed the interest in this file. <clears throat> and you have seen and discovered that there is not one solution fit for all. It depends really on your needs, on your situation, or how your age, how you want to pay also. That's why we, we propose a sort of a package of possibilities. And I do understand looking at the question that you have put on the chat, that you, you need to be assisted also on personal basis. That's why, uh, as Sir just mentioned, you can contact the SEPs and to get for a, a rendezvous presenting your own situation and eventually to, to discover that you are, you are already the assistant or you can eventually uh, be better treated by another contact. Uh, what we will do uh, as R&D, we will uh, publish on our website the presentation the recording of the question. We will also transfer and help Serge and Seps to, to work on the question raised in the chat. The chat will be also recorded. Uh, we will try as far as possible to provide a sort of question and answers, uh, of course, without mentioning your names. And we will also provide any other kind of assistance that you could eventually need. Uh, we fully support Seps. I'm myself member of the committee of SEPS and perhaps I invite you also you to join SEPS you know SEPS is not for only for those who are already retired but also for those who are over 55 so if you want to join SEPS and to support SEPS and, uh, and search you are more than welcome and you can pass through R&D if you wish so we will work also with affiliates I think that at the end of the story you will realize that there are actually two families of insurance there is one who is made by affiliates as a sort of framework contract, and is affiliates who is directly dealing and eventually supporting you with, a, in the, with insurance. There are other options in which you are just yourself subscribing the, the insurance. So you will be in a way by yourself if there is any specific question arising. So there are the two different possibilities. And it's also clear that having too many and so many people already subscribing the, through affiliates and SEPs the safe give uh, much more power than if you are by yourself with uh, your own insurance. But again, uh, it depends on your needs or your possibility also to pay the Rolls Royce that Sergio just mentioned. Uh, and another question that is always arising, I have already a good insurance. I'm really satisfied about, do you have to change? That is up to you. I see in the chat that you are very happy with ENG. 
uh, with your uh, repatriation insurance. So keep it if you are if you are happy about it, uh, and eventually to compare with another insurance if you can eventually change. So I think that we will uh, provide you with all this support. We will eventually organize another uh, in conference this time in uh, in French, if you wish so. Um, always at your disposal, and. Don't forget that we, we can have a very good complementary insurance, but our system is already very good and we must keep it. At any reform is put in question as a privilege too generous, is not always the case, but still is a very good system and we must keep it and avoid to be undermined by the next reform. We will fight again for keeping our self-regulation conditions also in this respect. So thank you very much for your big attendance and we will keep in touch. We have the list of those who have subscribed the, the invitation. So you will get directly the link when everything will be published. And then eventually you can share it with whoever you want. No problem, there is nothing secret on that. On the contrary, uh, I think there is a service to be provided by all the staff. And thank you again, Serge, for what you have been doing, for what you do. And uh, we will full support your effort and SEP support because it's really what the staff deserve and what the staff need. And I see so many colleagues thanking you. Uh, so I yes, think that I you think. must be satisfied <laughs> about it. <laughs> and we were almost 500 uh, uh, in the conference. <laughs> okay. Cristiano, <laughs> could I say something more? Sure. Just that, uh, of course, we will answer all the questions. I suppose I will get all the questions which are on the chat. Yeah. For the moment, we have already a lot of questions. There were last week and this week seminars to prepare for retirement. And these seminars got the same kind of presentation and generated tens of questions. So please know that we will answer all your questions but it could take more than one or two days. No problem. And we will also support you with our staff as R&D search in order to prepare the list of questions and eventually also to publish on the website question and answer, because I'm sure that you will get through the chat question that are already been raised during the meeting because the question are more or less standard. Apart of the fact that there are specific situation, I see that someone is mentioning the specific illness that is cannot be dealt as a general question and you, you will have a, a tailor-made assistance okay thank you very very much for that and uh, see you on the next conference bye bye thank you